What's up darling? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going through the top 10 lessons I learned this year, which I'm planning to implement by next year. And I'm quite sure you'll take one or two from those lessons. The very first lesson I learned this year is having meaningful experiences with the people I love. Yes, we like there is always a chance for us to give a balance or a strike to strike a balance between your work, your family, your happiness and your wealth. I mean, sorry, your health. So it's like, always not always putting money first or finances first why because at the end of the day we we'll, we have to notice that money cannot always buy every single thing so it is always very important for you to develop and spend more reasonable time experiencing living with people you love people you appreciate and creating more connective bonds with your family with your friends with your loved ones with your spouses with your what have you what or not like even if it's your customers or your client like building or nurturing a relationship with those people is much more lovelier than just basing every single thing on the circumference or basing every single thing on the idea of if it's not making money, it's not making sense, right? Like I see a lot of people trying to just oppose and jeopardize love, money, happiness, and joy. Why? Because we believe that the present world we are living in, if there is no money, the thing is not really making sense, right? So. The main psychology behind this lesson, and actually this lesson, I learned it from a YouTuber I listened to. I listened to his podcast. His name is Ali Abdal. He's a very interesting person, and I really love his content quite a lot. I'll leave a link down to his videos or to his channel that, down below in the comment section. So you can just check out his videos and also grab one or two things from it. So it's like living a much more happier life and creating more time with your loved ones and experiencing more of what makes you happy not just always chasing after many many money let's move on to the next tip the second lesson i learned this year is staying out of perfection and just living a life of not being scrappy practically but living like getting out of the comfort of perfection you see perfectionism makes you always procrastinate like i've learned i've seen this quite a lot of times that it's not really about how much I plan. It's not really about how much I put in effort into having a masterpiece. At least this year, it was a very interesting year. I think I created a video of how my 2022 went in this video right here. So just check down in the description below. I'll link a video on how I explained what I was able to achieve in 2022. But then and the point of this video is that the point of this particular lesson is that just try to go with the flow, like go with the flow and avoid perfectionism. The reason is that you see perfectionism always makes you procrastinate and you believe you are not ready for the thing or you are not capable enough to do the certain thing, which at the end of the day, you just spend a lot of your time doing things that are not really relevant when you are supposed to just put in the work and just do what you have to do at that particular time just to make up with that thing. So the main idea about, like the main idea behind this lesson is don't always be this perfectionist person and always wanting to be like the perfect thing, always wanting to make everything perfect. It is okay to plan. It is okay to have focus. It is okay to be dedicated. However, I have noticed that even if all of those things are in place, if you are always after being perfect, it will, link, it will, it will, it will take you a longer time to implement those plans. Why? Because you have already done the sweet part of the work and that is you thinking and you pondering about it. So it's always enough for you to just think about what you want to think about and get to work. Another very important lesson, which is the third one that I learned this year is not how far, but how well. This lesson is based on the psychological thinking of the gain and the gap. You see, how far is the gap? Which, how well is the gain? You see, there's always a difference. Like if you want to know how far you've gone or how better you're doing, don't measure your, don't measure your present point ha with how far you've gone. I mean, don't get, don't measure it with how far you've gone. Rather, you be, like you base it on the measure of how well have I been doing. I could remember in January 2022, it was very, very, it was literally like a boredom month for me. Why? Because I was looking at it like, I started my business a long time ago and I'm not really seeing the effort. I'm not really seeing the zeal. However, over time, I noticed that I have, done quite enough but it is not like it's like it, 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 it is not totally the way i was thinking about it right and that is why i then put put my, myself back a little bit and then i was like okay let me just look at this thing like what have i been able to achieve within the span of time okay let me give myself time am i going by 
in three months, what have I been able to achieve? Not how far have I, it is like, it is, it is, it is like, it is not like how far you've gone. It is how well you've been able to go in that span of time. Maybe you've, you set a threshold of you want to go this amount of followers, you want to grow this amount of net worth, you want to make this amount of customer base, you want to make this, you want to make that. So that is like, it is not like a scene. I am always after the, like, I'm not always after the being of, I want to do this thing. It's always like, this is why I want to do this thing. And that is the main thing of the game and not the gap. I'm after how well have I been able to do and not how far have I gone. The fourth tip is forget the noun and do the verb. I I came across this particular tip and I tried to implement it in my life through Ali Abdul's video. I don't know why I'm talking about Ali Abdul in this particular video, but then he's quite amazing. I love him. I love his content. As I said earlier, I'll leave a link down to him in the description box below. So like, don't always be after, like, like I've, I've noticed that a lot of times when I want to measure myself, I've, I have this psychological shift of who am I and what am I doing? Like, am I a baker? Am I a content creator? Or am I a law student? Or like, who am I versus what am I doing? So don't always, like, it, 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 it's like, don't be attached to who you are. Rather, it is what you are doing. So what am I doing? I read books. I create video content. I... I bake cakes. I'm not, it's, it's not like a see if, okay, I am a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm a content creator. No, those are attributive names. Those are nouns. So like, I try to detach myself from what do I want to be attributed to? Like, do I want to be called a lawyer? Do I want to be called a content creator? No, um, I create content, I bake cakes, I do this, I do that. Those are what I do. So I prefer to be, to be attributed to what I do than who I am. And those are two different things that needs to be, like, it needs to be separated, right? You need to be able to strike a distinct differences between who you are and what you're doing. So it's always better, like, I believe that, and I believe that I would I, I, I would really like to give it more of my preferences in 2023 that I want to be much more attributed to what I do less than who I am. Because who I, who I am is like, a little bit chunk of what I do, right? So, like, what really defines me is what I'm doing, not who I am. Sixth, is it the sixth or the fifth tip? It's about the fact that everyone, ha I believe everyone has um, a career risk of, to an extent. You see, over the year, this particular year, I noticed that I have this thing in me that'll be like, what if, what if nobody watches my video again? What if no one is interested in my content? What if no one calls me up for cake orders? What if, like, what if I'm not relevant? What if this thing happens? What if this thing happens? What if, like, everything just comes into my brain and I try to just try to look for an answer to it. And then the answer is, like, I, I, I spoke to one or two people. Like, I just discussed with one or two people, those people I look up to. And then I, I noticed that a lot of them were just, like, the answer that was practically dominating was everybody has that kind of thought. Everybody has a thought of, what am I doing? What if people don't find me relevant? What if people don't do this? What if people don't do that? But then the way I've been able to now come over this is just continue doing what you're doing. Continue being your own self. Continue doing what you know how to do. Continue like, like those are the answers I gave myself, right? And just do what you know how to do and continue doing those things you are doing, right? I don't, I don't know how to explain this a little bit deeper, but then I think that is just the main answer, right? I just want to do what I'm doing. I want to implement, like, I want to do me and reach my potential audience that will love me regardless of the fact that of, of, of whatever happens at the end of the day, right? I, I, I don't want to be this person that, like, the career risk thing is very, very tricky. And it, 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 it's always kind of interesting that, even no matter the point you find yourself in your business or whatever, you still have this shift in yourself and be like, what if this thing happens? What if this thing happens? What if this thing goes this way? So it's, it's, it's like based on the theory that don't be overshadowed by those thoughts, right? It will definitely come. Everybody has a career risk thought. And that is how I'm able to come over it of just doing yourself, being yourself and doing your thing. Another thing or another lesson I learned this year is to avoid procrastination, right? You see, procrastination is very, very tricky. And even, even though I still tell people not to procrastinate, I still find myself sometimes procrastinating. And how does it happen? You see, Ali Abdul said in one of his videos that procrastination is just as a result of you setting your bar or your standards very, very high. Because, you see, once you are 
placing your standards in a very high point, it, it feels as if if you are not having the energy enough to meet up with that point, you are not good enough, right? So if you want to avoid procrastination or postponement or shift of mind or shift of thought or plan changes, it is just for you to just lower your bar and you're going to follow through. Like I noticed that a lot of times when I want to do something, maybe I want to record a video or I want to do this or I want to create a content or anything that comes around my way, it just feels like a see if I'm not really getting myself, right? Like it feels at a point, it feels like it's not really necessary for me to do that thing. Meanwhile, as you mean, I had to lower my bar. Maybe I'm thinking about my background. I'm thinking about my audio. I'm thinking about my camera. I'm thinking about my writing. I'm thinking about the atmosphere. I'm thinking about the weather and all of those stuff. And I want the video to be very, very quite perfect. I noticed that I end up procrastinating those things, right? And it's just because my bars or my standards are set high. So it's very, very easy for you to avoid procrastination. And that is something I've really, I've learned this year. And that is just for me to lower the bar. Once you lower the bar of what you're doing and just be very, very natural with yourself and go with the flow. I think I said, I, I talked a little bit about this particular tip in tip two or lesson two in this particular video, yeah? So it's just like a see you lowering the bar and going with your vibe and not so much getting too bothered about how perfect you want it to be. Because the more you are chasing perfection, the more you will continue to procrastinate. If there is no bad deal in you wanting to level up yourself and making every single video of the last time better than today. That is okay, right? But then there's always a limit to every single thing. And the limit is where you need to place your standards lower in order to avoid procrastination. The third tip I learned or another lesson I learned this year is get going and be good. Like get going and you get good. You see, a lot of times, I think it was about January where I was not really getting this vibe for myself. I don't really know what the purpose of what I was doing online. I was like, well, am I a content creator? Am I a baker? Am I a recipe developer? Or am I like a lot of things were coming to my mind. I didn't really know what I needed to do, right? And it was just like I see I was not ready for anything. And deep down, I know what I wanted to do, but I just believe I was not qualified enough yet to do those things. So or or I don't have the requirements yet to do those things. Or I, I felt like if I have to put myself out there, who are those that will get to listen to me? They will be like, what happened to my background? What is this? What is that? Like a lot of thoughts were coming into my mind, which were really giving me this backstrop of a thing. So the main lesson behind this is just get, get going. Just start whatever you want to start. And and, and then I kickstarted the whole thing. I think that was March. That was March 2022. It was very, very interesting. It was a very, very energetic time for me. And I really thank God that that time was very, very lovely since I started the thing that I started going more. The more I went, the better I became, right? So it's, it's like as if I posted one video today, one video content that I made sure the, the second was better than the last and like that, like that, like that. I kept on going, 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 going. As you never started, it should have been very, very difficult for me. So the challenge I'm giving you right now is I want you to also challenge yourself that you want to do this right now, this time. I don't know the time you're watching this video right now, but then I believe you can set a challenge for yourself and know what you want to do, how you want to go about it. Just get going. You'll get better. This particular tip or this particular lesson is also gotten from Ali Abdul's, one of Ali Abdul's video. I think I came across the video around May and the, the lesson is what people think about me is not my business. Yes, what people think about you is not your business. That is their own business. That is their own problem. What people, your own problem is what you want to do for yourself. How do you want to relate with people at your own vibe? How do you want to be natural with them? That is your own problem. You don't have any problem on thinking about people and telling them, or you want to, okay, this person said this thing about you and you want to try to reconcile, or this person said you did this without even knowing the reason or all of this stuff. So like what people are thinking about you is not your problem. It is their problem and not yours, right? I really, I, I really resonate with this a lot because I'm very, very subconscious minded person like i i really take things to heart a lot and i try to understand every single person from their own view right i want to always like far back in the past i want to always be in the best shoes of every person but then now like i find myself that i'm giving myself a lot of stress trying to fit in every single person and who cares about that since it's not even my since it's not even my problem so the main thing is that my task is to do better to do good to be 
like to be in a relationship with people and just be myself. I don't need, I don't really need to always judge myself based on what they want me to do, right? Like, I mean, based on what they say or, or a perspective or how they perceive me to be. The most important thing is for me to just be myself and do what I want to do and focus more on how I want to relate with them and not how they want me to relate with them, right? That is just it. Practically, the ninth step is in relation to the eighth step and that is that be yourself and not, what they want, and not who they want you to be. You see, this is very, very critical. And if you have to look deep into it, a lot of people on social media, online, on the internet are leaning towards social pressure or let me say psycho social psychological shifts that you are unable to decide for your own self what you want. You are buying that shoe because you see someone wearing it. You are buying that bag because you see someone using it. We are sewing that cloth because you see someone sewing something similar. You're using that phone or you have, you just want to change your phone. Why? Because you believe it is necessary for you to change the phone because the one you're using does not meet up with the one your friends are using and all of those stuff. So like, it's, it's, it, it really happened to me too, right? Like, I don't want to, I, I, I want to be myself. I don't want to be who people want me to be. I can, I can decide to be a baker. I want to bake cakes and sell. And I decided, no. I want to just make cake content. I'm not really selling. I have had nothing that wants to bring, that want to fetch me my income and my revenue. And that is what I want to be. Like, what kind of content am I creating? What suits me better? Like, happiness draws down, down to all of those things, right? It's not really about how you want people to perceive you. It's like, it's not really about how people are perceiving you. It's how you want them to feel you. No, like, you, you cannot fit in with every single person's shadow and you cannot always be the perfect. Like, there's this saying that you cannot be the hero in everybody's story. Yeah. If you're always trying to be a hero in everybody's story, you're going to burn out. That is very, very sure. So the main psychology behind this whole thing is just do yourself, be who you want to be. Like, in the coming year, I want to just be that person. Like, I want to, like, I don't want to focus more. I don't want to give a focus or a damn anything to what this person, what this person is saying, what you want me to do to you, how you want me to relate with you. How am I relating with you? If it suits me, perfect. If it doesn't, that is your problem. Because I said it earlier that what people are thinking about you is their own problem and not your own problem. Your own problem is just to focus on what you do, do your shit the, the better way and that is all. The tenth tip I learned this year is persistency, consistency, dedication, and focus. You see, these things are very, very important. I said persistency, consistency, dedication, and focus. You see, a lot of times, a lot of people are saying they are not really... Like, I noticed that once you put a lot of time into something, you definitely see the results. That is just it. You see, you are not yet doing it enough. I could remember when I started posting my content on Instagram... It felt as if I was not getting the momentum, I was not getting the feel I was looking for, and it was not really giving me what I needed, right? And it was it was a little bit tricky, it was a little bit fearsome that it's not really giving me back. But then I was just like, let me just keep doing this thing, let me just keep in posting every single day. And all of a sudden it started to change. It started to change little by little by little by little. I started to see the changes. And it was very, very drastic, it was very, very important. It was, it was mind blowing. Like going from just imagine going from 3,207 to 15,600 as at the time of this recording of this video. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not a business strategist. I'm not whatever comes your way, right? I'm just a small business owner to you that is just trying to reflect how this year went. And here are the top lessons. Like, like put in your efforts, put in your consistency, be dedicated, be focused, and set your plans, yeah. I'm, I was trying to remember the last one is setting your plans. Yeah, I think I have lots of plans for next year. I want to grow my Instagram more, my TikTok, my YouTube, my revenue, my income. Yeah, I want to grow more income. Like my income streams, how, how am I getting revenue to the business to myself? I want to travel places. I want to, like, I want to have a tour. And I want to also spend nice, more nice time with my friends with my family, with my loved ones, with what have you or what not. Also, yes, if you made it right to the end of this video, to this particular point, I really appreciate you for that. And I hope you've learned one or two things from the old video, from the 10 tips I learned this year, which I'm planning to implement by the fall, by, by the coming year. And also, if you watch this video right here, or I'll leave the link down in the description for you to watch the video of the mistakes I made this year, for my life mistakes or business mistakes, also that I made this year, which I reflected 
the reasons why I made those, mis those mistakes and how I'm planning to fix them or how I got out of those mistakes in this particular year and what I learned from those mistakes. So if you're very much interested, I really appreciate you for watching this video. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and also the notification bell beside it just to subscribe. It helps me keep, it keeps me motivated and it helps my brand. It helps me very much well. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to go and watch the mistakes video I made in 2020. You know I love you. Keep Follow your joy. You know I love you. Mwah.